The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVEDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Our gold sponsors, BB&T, now Truist, and Fitzpatrick, Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Crayola and Good Shepherd. Our interview sponsor, Follett. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications. Our host, ArtsQuest. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Nestor, President and Chief Executive Officer at Lehigh Valley Health Network. At LVHN, we offer nationally recognized care close to home. Today and every day, our focus is on the health of our community. We know that a healthy community paves the way for a healthy economy. We're proud to partner with Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation as we work together to make the Lehigh Valley strong, vibrant, and safe. Hi, I'm Don Cunningham, President and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation. And welcome to the new executive interview series. During the last 30 years, uh, we had never seen a period of time where so many new presidents and CEOs of major employers in the Lehigh Valley have been named to take over the companies. Uh, in the last 18 months, we've seen 15 different executives named at major employers across the Lehigh Valley. Uh, and in these challenging times where we can't gather as we usually do, uh, we thought it would be great if you had an opportunity to meet the new leaders who are shaping the future of the Lehigh Valley, that are running the companies that drive forward our economy. And today, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, Corey Cole, who is the new president and CEO of Follett Corporation uh, in the Lehigh Valley. Follett has been here in the Lehigh Valley making uh, ice machines and uh, water coolers and ice uh, and uh, food manufacturing equipment for, uh, for a long time. And Corey, uh, welcome. Thank you for being uh, with us today, and thank you for being part of the Lehigh Valley economy. Well, thank you for inviting me. And uh, a lot of folks probably don't realize that Follett, um, which is a well-known name here, uh, was purchased uh, three, four years ago Correct. by the company Middleby, uh, yep. which is based in, in Elgin, Sh Illinois. Elgin, Illinois. And uh, you had started uh, at least with some of your executive career at Middleby. Uh, and Middleby is um, a company that is very large, almost $3, three billion a year in sales. Yeah, three plus, yeah. And Follett is, uh, is a part of that. Correct. Uh, could you uh, tell us a little bit about Middleby and the connection to Follett? Sure. So um, Middleby is uh, very large in the food service industry. So they primarily have three different segments. One that is food service, which is what Follett is part of. Uh, we're one of about 34, 35 companies under that umbrella right now. Um, then there is the residential sector, which is brands like Viking, uh, Viking Range out of Mississippi, um, Lynx Grill, a lot of the, the higher end product. Yeah. And then there's a food processing group, which actually gets into equipment that will process the food at uh, large industrial bakeries, meat processing centers, that type of thing. And um, now Follett um, is uh, a company that, while the name is known in the Lehigh Valley, folks here may not know exactly the products that are made at Follett. They've probably used those products, they've seen those products. Can you tell us a little bit about the unique products made here in the Lehigh Valley at Follett? Yeah, so Follett really began its life as an ice bin uh, manufacturer, so storage of ice and other people's ice machines would go on top of it to produce it. And Follett got into building ice machines. We only do tubelet ice, so that nice chew, you know, chewable ice that you can get at various restaurants and uh, local stores is, is what we do. We don't do cubes. Um, but it's then- a saw, It's an unbelievable, like, you think of it almost sometimes as hospital ice it's, too. Right? It, it's and like it is, hospitals right? yeah. are a huge part of our market. So we do a lot of hospitals. Um, we do ice and water dispensers in hospitals. We do ice and water dispensers in office systems. Um, and then we do the commercial ice makers. And then a lot of people don't realize we do um, storage refrigerators, freezers in hospitals as well. So storing vaccines, 
any medical products, uh, that type of thing. So that's, that's a large part of our business now too. So now the majority of those products that are sold uh, nationally and internationally are made here uh, in the Lehigh Valley. Is that they right? all are. They all yep. are, right? Yep. I, I Between know, Easton and Bethlehem. And I think, did the company add a plant in Poland in uh, 2005? Uh, it, it did. Yeah, it so did. we, uh, that actually has moved under a sister company. Okay. So it's no longer part of the Follett brand. Um, but that facility is still there. It still makes ice machines, but it also yeah. makes a lot of custom steel fabrication, custom refrigeration, uh, things that we had a sister company called QualServe down in Fort Smith, Arkansas, that their two business models were almost identical. So we so, moved it under that. And in addition to uh, running Follett now, and many of us here know Steve Follett for a long time, very active in the community and the Follett family, um, I believe you're the first president of Follett that isn't a Follett, at that least since correct. the 60s, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and you're also within Middleby, you're also the pres president of the Beverage Group. Yeah, yeah, so I'm what's called a group president. Yeah. So I have 12 different brands that I'm responsible for. Um, most of them are actually on the West Coast. Uh, Follett and one down in North Carolina are the only two out here. Um, and then I'm responsible for managing the sales teams in the convenience store sales. And then I also am the national accounts rep for a couple of the big chains in the U.S. Okay. But you've chosen to move here. We did. Um, when Steve announced his retirement, we were actually looking at, we're Minnesotans, uh, originally Midwesterners. Is you where can tell we, a little bit in your <laughs> voice, right? <laughs> we spent the, you know, the vast majority of our lives in the Midwest. Yeah. You know, Minnesota to Ohio to Michigan to Indiana, back to Minnesota. Then we had a stint in uh, California, which is where I actually went to work for a company that was purchased by Middleby, and that's how I got in the Middleby uh, arena. Um, so how long have you been involved with Middleby? I've been involved with Middleby since 2012. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you came in as a very similar situation as Middleby purchased Follett. You were with a company that Middleby purchased in t 2012. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, the difference is uh, the company I worked for in California was privately held when I started there about 18 months later was purchased by Middleby. Um, the ownership uh, chose to, to leave the business and, and I was general manager at the time and moved into the president's role. Yeah. So in the process of this transition, have you gotten to know Steve? And oh yeah. And, okay. Steve and I had breakfast yesterday morning. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So we know Steve and Jeannie and, uh, yeah. and they're really, a lot of fun. Really great people that have uh, been very involved in so many aspects of the Lehigh Valley and uh, no doubt that it would turn o the company would turn over in a good hands that obviously it's in, in with you. And you, you and your wife now have, are living in uh, Hellertown, Saucon Valley area? We do. We yeah. live in Hellertown at the moment, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Any, any, any kids with you? Um, yeah. <laughs> no. We actually had one for a little while who yeah. uh, kind of moved back with us. But we have three kids in California and one in North Dakota. Okay. Yeah. Now, so um, what are some of your initial uh, perceptions of uh, the plant, the operations at Follett, and then also of uh, being here in the, on the East Coast instead of the Midwest and California? Well, you know, as far as the plant goes, uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Steve and his father, Don, and what they had accomplished here and what they had built. It was, uh, it was nice stepping into something that wasn't broke. Um, yeah. And, you know, just something, you know, to try to take it one more level. Um, they had done a lot of great things to grow this business and grow it very fast. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's a little intimidating to step into those shoes. Right. But at the same point, it, it was a fun challenge. Um, and how many, about how many employees are at uh, Fall at the main Just shy of 300, 300 at the moment. Yeah. Yep. And that includes both obviously um, multi-skilled workers, manufacturing workers, along with your full complement of professional executive staff, accounting, Correct. a wide variety of yeah. uh, jobs there. Correct. Yeah. And we have, currently we have manufacturing facility and customer service, a little bit of tech service located in Bethlehem. 
and the rest of it's in the East End facility. Yeah, in, in, in Forks Township. Yeah. Forks Township, yeah. yep. And also actually uh, undergoing uh, an expansion. We are. We are adding in a 96,000 square foot addition. Um, you know, quite honestly, it will be to vacate the Bethlehem facility and get everything under one roof, mm -hmm. which just makes it um, so much easier internally for communication. And, um, you know, we do have logistical things where we're moving products from one facility to the other all the time. This way we eliminate some of that. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we're real grateful for that decision to uh, remain and expand. You know, our organization, Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation, is often known for uh, attracting and recruiting new companies into the market to invigorate the economy. But we work just as much with companies here on retention and expansion. In yeah, fact, and that's one of the beauties of working with a company like Middleby is we have, you know, the capital available to be able to do things like this. And uh, and we prefer to own our buildings versus lease them. And so it just it, it was good timing and going to be a win-win. And very encouraging for all of us here that despite the events of the last six months with uh, COVID, um, that the that Fallout hasn't changed its plans because I know this has been in development for some time yeah. uh, to expand and consolidate the operation. Yeah, you know, we anticipate someday things are going to get back to whatever the new normal is going to be, yeah. but we anticipate business coming back. And, um, you know, Fallout, with uh, a lot of our business being on the healthcare side, uh, have seen that part of the business stay fairly strong. The food service took a, a significant hit. Um, but, you know, part of the reason for the addition is to grow into other products as well. And okay. so, you know, I'm getting beyond just the, the health care into, into other avenues on the medical side. So the last six months in terms of the effect of the, the quarantine and the slowdown has been kind of a mixed situation for you in different product lines. It has, yes. Yeah. Yeah which is very um, indicative of what's happened across the economy in the Lehigh Valley. You know, we, we're seeing uh, certain sectors of our economy actually seeing a lot of growth. A lot of the industrial sector, manufacturing sector, food and beverage production, um, fulfillment uh, that is here. While obviously, like everyone else, we've struggled in the service industry, hospitality, tourism, visitation. Um, so uh, it's going to be interesting where the dust settles. Uh, heading into 2021, uh, but I think it's also important for people to realize that the economy is still chugging along and companies are still <laughs> making product and, and doing well out there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and you know, we're, we're seeing signs of things uh, improving and we're trying to make sure we're, we're being proactive to that and, and not getting caught off guard and trying to play catch up. Uh, you know, so fortunately, you know, unfortunately, we did have to do some reductions at the facility, but fortunately, we've been able to start bringing some of those people back to work. So that's great. Yeah. Now, your background is mechanical engineering. It right? is. Uh, so you, you come to the executives from the uh, executive suite from the process of knowing the products and developing uh, machinery from the ground floor. Yeah. Right. So. What was, a little, what was your career tra trajectory that led to this position? Well, that's interesting. Uh, I started my career uh, really in engineering. Um, and years and years ago when I was in Michigan, we had a, a, and it's always been in manufacturing. So I have always been uh, manufacturing equipment, food service related somehow. And uh, I worked for a facility where we were struggling a little bit getting equipment out on time. And I was head of engineering at the time or an engineering manager. Uh, the VP of operations came to me and said, you know, manufacturing keeps telling me it's engineering that's preventing it from getting done. <laughs> engineering keeps yeah. telling me it's manufacturing. Well, guess what? As of Monday, you have them both figure it out. Okay. And so that's actually yeah. how I got into the operations side of the business mm -hmm. and, and loved it and have kind of continued in that role. And so from there, moved to Minnesota. Uh, surprise, surprise, family owned business. A year and a half after we got there, it was purchased by a, a large, yeah. another large yeah. company, and the yeah. family left the business. But uh, I moved into the general manager's role there and then the president's role. 
And then uh, economy kind of went south and they consolidated the uh, executive and admin physici or positions into um, Chicago. So then that's when I moved to Northern California. A year and a half later, they're purchased by a large <laughs> Chicago company. Um, but again, it was when I moved out there, it was operations. Um, you know, the, the patriarch of the family, when he decided to retire, uh, he moved me into the general manager's role, and then I moved into the president's role so shortly after. So you've been after. through this prototype before? Yes. Several other times, yes, right? I have. Yeah. So I know you can survive it. Yeah, and, you've, and it's all been in the food service arena. It has, yeah. yeah. That's, that's great. And you're Primarily on the cold side of the business, but a little cooking yeah. side in there as well. Yeah, and uh, now you, uh, your mechanical engineering degree is from the University of Minnesota. Yep. Right. So you, now you know now you're in Penn State country, right? I, I so do know that yeah. very well. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening with college football this fall, but when you show up in the plant, you know, wearing that, uh, what is it, the Badgers? The Gophers. The, the Gophers, the yeah. Gophers sweatshirt, you're going to be in trouble. Well, you yeah. know, we yeah. finally had a year last year we could be proud of, so I guess uh, yeah. should have expected this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, I was getting to earlier, so moving, has this been your first time living in the eastern part of the United States? It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, we lived in Ohio very briefly. We lived in uh, Michigan, Indiana border for 14 years, I think, then back to Minnesota for 14. But, yeah, this is the first time we've been this far east. Yeah, and, and, you, and you came in in 29, last year, right? January of 2019. Yeah, fortunately yep. you got here a little bit before everything got locked down. But yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, how are you and your wife finding uh, the Lehigh Valley so far? You know, we like it. It's yeah. uh, had really no idea what to expect. Um, we, uh, you know, have found the housing to be very comparable to what we like. So that's been great. Everybody's been very friendly. Um, I think the point or the, the one item that I just was not, didn't know to expect and have just grown to love is the history. Okay. You know, you, you get to Minnesota and California and they just haven't been around as long. Right, and, right, you know, to, right. to think in our neighborhood there's homes that were built 1794 and 98 that people are still inhabiting is amazing. Right. Right. And all the history or historical buildings you drive by, it's, it's an amazing area. And and the stats. Yeah, and you're yeah. Si you sit here right in front of uh, a really uh, fascinating part of our history, yep. which was also the dominant part of the last era of our economy, which right. was Bethlehem Steel and yeah. heavy manufacturing. And But here in Bethlehem, even if you just go across the river, you go into that 18th century history of the Moravians and the colonial era that was settled before the founding of the United States. Yep. So, yeah, it no, is, it's, 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 it's an amazing area. It's, it's a lot of fun to learn about. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's great. It's great to have you here. And one of the things we're real proud of is that um, the um, uh, manufacturing is still alive and well here. Obviously, yes. Follett is a big part of it. And people ask me all the time now, is like, okay, well, the, it was easy to identify manufacturing with Bethlehem Steel and Mack Trucks. What is it that you manufacture in the Lehigh Valley today? It's the second biggest part of the economy. It employs 35,000 people. It's responsible for about seven and a half billion in GDP every year. But it's coming in smaller chunks. It's companies like Follett that right. have 200 or 300 people making specialized products that maybe people use or component parts of products that are in products people are using all over the country and the world and they're just not aware that it's taking taking place in our own backyard. Um, with your experience and uh, around manufacturing for a whole career, what what are your viewpoints on the future of American manufacturing and why does it still make sense to make products in the United States uh, versus other parts of, of the world? Well, I think it, it still makes sense for a lot of reasons. One is the there's a skilled workforce. So, you know, people that that put quality into it and are proud of what they make. Um, the logistics of things coming in for overseas can just add such a challenge, you know. People are required to maintain so much more inventory than they normally would because it's coming in from overseas. They have to be careful of um, 
you know, shipping lanes and, and, you know, never fails when you got a critical shipment coming in for some reason, it gets held up at customs and the next thing you know, you're in trouble. And you don't have that here. You know, we're able to manage the logistics much better. Um, we are not paying all those additional freight charges. We're seeing some of those, uh, you know, uh, other countries, their expenses are, are increasing, and mm -hmm. certainly with tariffs is, is another one where all of a sudden things are uh, much more competitive than they used to be. And um, yeah. so we found, you know, it's, um, all, you know, we have manufacturing facilities around the world, but domestically with we, with yeah. Middleby, yeah. yeah, but we find, you know, competing in the domestic market, we do very well making it in the domestic market. What, what role has uh, technology and advancement of automation played in making American manufacturing uh, competitive? You know, it's, it's huge in the high volume, you know, uh, manufacturing facilities. You take a look at the automobile industry and what they're able to do with automation is just mind boggling. When you get to products like ours, it's much harder to put a lot of that automation in just because the volumes are less and you don't get the repetition and there's a little more specialty in the items. So more of our technology is building in how do you use the equipment, you know, touch screen controls now and being able to, to talk to the unit remotely and being able to get alarms if something's going out of temperature or something isn't performing right and you know letting people know in advance that hey you know you need to do some maintenance or um, you know in today's environment how can we do things touchless so you were able to dispense water and ice without having to touch the unit um, so we see a lot of that type of technology is big and then you know in the manufacturing facility we've continued to invest in you know, lasers for cutting the stainless and, uh, and a little bit of galvanized and, you know, the press brakes. And um, so we, you know, we definitely, you know, again, speed, just how can we improve throughput? Yeah. So skilled workforce, the skills development, critical factor for your manufacturing workforce? Yeah, it is. And we develop a lot of that from within. Um, but you know this is a this is a market where people are used to building things, and uh, you know so there is a desire to do that. You know, in California, the market was more for servicing, and so finding people that actually wanted to manufacture product was much harder. Yeah, I think that's been a critical part of the region's success. You know, having three really good high school level career technical institutes that still train you know, ninth through 12th grade kids in the mechanical arts and the, and the building trades, and then two community colleges that really take that to the next level. And a lot of our community colleges here do partnerships with specific employers to create training programs specifically for the shop floors um, of those uh, workforces. And we've, you know, noticed a lot of our uh, fellow manufacturing companies in the area do a lot with internships. Uh, I see much, much more internship here than I have in any of the other areas I've lived. So yeah. a lot of helping to develop and educate and bring those people into the manufacturing realm. You know, it's good to hear you say that, you know, as a, as a kind of a self-plug for LVEDC. <laughs> we, we spend most of our work in market on talent supply, uh, and we have a large talent supply group that links uh, educators uh, to employers and work on internships. In fact, we have an, a large internship summit that we host twice a year with all the schools here and employers. So um, we found that talent supply is the key to economic growth. If you have the employees and the employees with the right skills, uh, companies will, uh, will want to be here. Um, and uh, you know, we're really grateful that uh, Follett chooses to be here, that it chose to came here back, come here back with the Follett family back in the 60s and, and remaining and with that commitment to the Lehigh Valley because is, that's an important part too to have corporations to view things the way you just articulated, that we can compete, we can make good products in the United States. Uh, and that it's not just a, a rush to uh, the cheapest cost of the moment right. in making product. And, and Middleby does pride itself on, we tend to build higher end equipment, you know, and, and we feel higher quality equipment. And so it's, 
we don't go after the commodity me too type products we we're, we're always we're looking at buying companies that are differentiable and you know uh, follow what they're doing with the with the chewable ice or the chewblets and um, just what we do on the uh, you know the refrigeration storage side of the business it's so you, you see maybe some more new product development coming or at least, uh, you know, variations to existing products? Uh. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of our challenges right now is the refrigerants that are being used in the, in the ice makers and the refrigerators and freezers. And, uh, you know, with all the environmental changes and regulations that are being required to make sure we keep up with that. And then at the same point, um, you know, always trying to, to have product that differentiates us from the competition. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, it's great to have you here. Uh, give you an official welcome to the Lehigh Valley, even though you've been here for some time. It's great to have Falad here, and it's great to have Corey Cole uh, with us here in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, as uh, things begin to open up uh, the, through the end of, this, uh, end of this year, and hopefully in the next year, you'll get to meet Corey out and about uh, in the Lehigh Valley. But um, uh, for the time being, hopefully you got to uh, know a little bit about Corey, his background, and his new role as president and CEO of Follett Corporation right here in the Lehigh Valley. Thank you. We're all doing what we can to stop the spread of COVID-19, and that includes wearing a mask when out in public. How you remove your mask matters too. Take it off from the back and be careful not to touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Make sure to wash your hands when you're done. You should also wash your mask after each use. Keep masks you've worn in a sealed container until you can wash them. And remember, my mask protects you and your mask protects me. The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVEDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Our gold sponsors, BB&T Now Truist and Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Crayola and Good Shepherd. Our interview sponsor, Follett. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications. Our host, ArtsQuest. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series.